I'm Joanne from the Full Spectrum Centre Limited, an award-winning wellness and vocational training centre, and you're listening to the Full Spectrum Wellness Podcast. This show is all about physical, mental, emotional and spiritual wellness, and it's for people who are looking to improve their overall health and well-being. Each week, I'll share with you all the positive takeaways, tools, techniques and tips that I've gathered in both my personal and professional wellness journey that will help you to look, feel and be well. With a dose of motivation and meditation to keep you going, I'll be joined by a few friends who will be sharing their insights along the way too. Welcome to episode four of our Full Spectrum Wellness Podcast. I'm so happy to be back here with you for our fourth episode. Now, October is Pro Touch Awareness Month, and it's an event that's aimed at raising awareness of the benefits of hands on therapies, especially massage, and the importance of human touch and connection. As a Pro Touch ambassador, I've taken a pledge to educate about the incredible benefits of hands on therapies positive therapeutic touch and human connection. There's two quotes that I absolutely love that I wanted to share with you today. The first is from Maria Konnikova in The Power of Touch. The more we learn about touch, the more we realise just how central it is in all aspects of our lives, cognitive, emotional, developmental, behavioural, from womb into old age. It's no surprise that a single touch can affect us in multiple powerful ways. And from Frederick Sachs in The Natural History of Senses. The first sense to ignite, touch is the last to burn out. Long after our eyes betray us, our hands remain faithful to the world. In describing such final departures, we often talk of losing touch. Reintroducing touch and human connection has never been so important after the last couple of years and the global pandemic. Restrictions meant that we were unable to meet face to face, instead connecting remotely. We were unable to hug, shake or hold hands. Therapists like me were unable to see clients and deliver vital, positive and therapeutic touch therapies at a time when we were so badly needed. We've all been touch starved, which has no doubt led to increased mental health issues, stress, anxiety, health concerns, relationship problems and much, much more. Now, many studies show that both human touch and snuggling with our fur babies can boost our overall health and well-being, help us lose weight, strengthen our immune system, improve our sleep, elevate our mood, stave off illness and soothe us. It's been shown that touch stimulates the release of oxytocin, also known as the love or bonding hormone, and it helps release other feel-good hormones too, whilst reducing stress hormones. Touch is a basic human need, and it's a basic human instinct. Think about what happens when a child falls and hurts itself. The parent picks them up and says, now, now, let's rub it better. And think about what happens when a friend or a loved one is upset. We automatically place a hand on their shoulder, hold their hand or offer them a hug. The power of positive touch should never be underestimated. Touch is not only essential for stimulating our nervous system and for promoting healthy physical development, but it's also essential for our mental, emotional and social development. In her book, The Power of Touch, author Phyllis K. Davis explores the human need to touch and be touched and she shares important insights on physical contact, not only as a biological need, but also as a language that communicates love more powerfully than words. The power of touch examines the catastrophic effects on individuals not nurtured by loving touch. Phyllis says that people derived of this kind of touch often exhibit compulsive overeating, restlessness, drug abuse, promiscuity and workaholism. Even more shocking, she says that singles deprived of touch have a death rate five times higher than their married counterparts. In September 2021, the research article Social Touch Deprivation During COVID-19 
Effects on Psychological Wellbeing and Craving Interpersonal Touch was published. It concluded that intimate touch deprivation during the pandemic was associated with worse psychological well-being, namely feelings of loneliness and anxiety. In addition to these effects on well-being, individuals seem to crave this type of intimate touch the most during the pandemic, with such effects being much more prominent the more days that they had been practising social distancing. However, craving touch during the pandemic depended on individual differences in attachment style, as well as in attitudes and experiences towards touch. One of the advantages of hands-on therapies such as massage is that it is a formalised touch. In other words, as a therapist, I have permission to touch a client within established and defined boundaries for therapeutic benefit only. And that's an important distinction. And that's the key. To be positive and therapeutic, touch has to be consensual. As a survivor of childhood sexual abuse and physical bullying, touch was always an issue for me until I began the process of healing. A big part of my healing journey was my very first massage therapy session. I was away at a residential spa for a weekend with my mum, which included a massage therapy session for both of us. This was before I had retrained as a therapist, and to say that I was apprehensive was an understatement, but my mum had no idea about my experiences and the abuse. So I went along to the appointment and I met my therapist Sally who immediately put me at ease. Sally has always been my inspiration and I've always aspired to be the kind of therapist that she was. Bless her, I bet she wondered what the heck was going on on that first session because as she began the treatment, I nearly jumped off the massage couch. Years of built-up fear, worry, tension, shame, guilt and all sorts of other emotions released in seconds. From that day on, every time mum and I went away to the spa, I made sure that I booked in with Sally and the healing continued and I'm so grateful for the journey. And not just massage, both Reiki and reflexology have also helped me physically, mentally, emotionally and energetically, aiding the management of my PCOS, my polycystic ovarian syndrome and my chronic migraine symptoms. Now, in a study in 1997, titled The Effects of Sexual Abuse Are Lessened by Massage Therapy, was published in the Journal of Bodywork and Movement Therapies. Women who had experienced sexual abuse were given a 30-minute massage twice a week for one month. Immediately after the massage, the women reported being less depressed and less anxious, and their salivary cortisol levels decreased following the session. After the one-month treatment period, the massage therapy group experienced a decrease in depression and in life event stress. Now, although the relaxation therapy control group also reported a decrease in anxiety and depression, their stress hormones did not change and they reported an increasingly negative attitude towards touch. So my experience of the therapeutic benefits of massage are backed up by scientific research. Let's delve a little deeper into how touch can heal. Numerous studies show that touch stimulates the body's natural healing process. That skin-to-skin contact between a new mum and a new baby as soon as it's born supports better physical and developmental outcomes. That hugging lowers blood pressure and heart rate. That physical contact also encourages learning and decision-making. That touch can be calming and reassuring to people in distress. That touch can reduce feelings of isolation. That touch can increase levels of feel-good hormones. That touch promotes effective communication and maintains relationships, and that the release of oxytocin reduces stress hormones, increases pain thresholds, promotes growth and healing of wounds and injuries. That touch can also boost the immune system, improving the body's natural defences, and halt or slow the progress of disease. And that people can communicate several distinct emotions through touch alone, including anger, fear, disgust love, gratitude and sympathy and accuracy rates range from 48 to 83% comparable with those found in studies of emotion shown in faces and voices. The Touch Research Institute in Miami has conducted over 100 studies on the positive effects of massage therapy on many functions and medical conditions in many different age groups. Amongst their significant research findings are enhanced growth, for example in preterm infants, diminished pain, for example in fibromyalgia, decreased autoimmune problems, 
for example, increased pulmonary function in asthma and decreased glucose levels in diabetes. Enhanced immune function, for example, increased natural killer cells in HIV and cancer. And enhanced alertness and performance, for example, EEG pattern of alertness and better performance on math computations. They state that many of these effects appear to be mediated by decreased stress hormones. So, hug, cuddle, snuggle, hold hands, have a haircut, stroke your cat or dog, get a massage or book a reflexology or Reiki session. If you struggle with anxiety and panic attacks, if you live alone or you don't have a pet, you can try havening, a self-soothing technique that uses touch to create delta waves in the brain and was developed by Ronald Rudin, MD, an internist with a PhD in organic chemistry. A really simple type of havening is to rub the palms of your hands slowly together, as if you're washing your hands, or give yourself a hug. Simply place the palms of your hands on your opposite shoulders and rub them down your arms to your elbows. Another really easy type of havening is to wash your face. So place your fingertips high up on your forehead, just within your hairline, and then let your fingers fall down your face to your chin. There are three main forms of havening. The first being transpirational, which can help if you are feeling anxiety from the day's events, if you receive distressing news, or you find yourself in a desperate situation. Whilst using one of the simple types of havening that I've already mentioned, talk about what you're feeling. For example, as you give yourself a hug, you may say something like, I'm feeling so worried about the increase in energy prices. I'm worried about how I'm going to pay my bills and I'm feeling helpless. As the touch from the hug produces delta brain waves, special nerve endings send signals to the part of the brain that make it feel safe and secure. This helps to take away anxiety from the words that you're speaking. In other words, while talking about your feelings, the emotions are being neutralised by the delta waves to help restore calm. The second form is affirmational havening. Repeating positive affirmations while practising one of the havening techniques can be a very powerful combination due to the fact that havening mimics the sleep stage when your brain incorporates the memories of the day. Repeating affirmations while havening puts those positive thoughts into the brain's memory centres. This can be very effective at resetting your anxiety levels. For example, during the day, if you get anxious or frightened, just think safe, peaceful, calm, whilst you rub your hands together to help diffuse your brain fear centres and promote soothing. The third form is event havening, often used for people with post-traumatic stress disorder. And it's been found to help them eliminate the intrusive thoughts, nightmares and flashbacks associated with PTSD. But this form is best done with a professionally trained therapist. I hope this episode has demonstrated the importance of positive touch and how essential it is for our overall health and well-being. I'm off to snuggle up with my two crazy cocker spaniels, Rosie and Daisy. But I look forward to being back with you for episode five next week. In the meantime, I'm sending you all love and a big virtual hug. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. I hope you found the discussion and the tips covered really helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this episode, please do leave a rating and a review and share it with your friends and family. Pop along to our website at thefullspectrumcenterlimited.com and join our self-care and wellness newsletter club. You'll receive our free 55-page printable self-care guide and workbook. Well, that's all for this episode, but I really look forward to seeing you next week. Take care and bye for now.